Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the fourth of our SCCA F9 lecture recaps. This is a recap of our lecture on the financial management environment. Remember you can download this or any of our mind maps as a PDF for free on our website which is shown there. The first area then that we talked about in this lecture was economic policy. And what I wanted to show here was that economic policy is incredibly complex. Doing one thing in the economy, like raising interest rates, for instance, will have a massive effect on other areas of the economy that you maybe weren't expecting. So the first thing we need to know is what are the targets of the policy makers? What are they trying to achieve? The first of those targets we said was full employment, everyone getting a job. Number one, that keeps them happy, so they'll vote in the government that's in power again. And number two, it keeps money flowing in the economy. It keeps other people in jobs if everyone else has jobs. The next target is price stability. So we're thinking here about controlling inflation. Remember, inflation is increasing prices. So as our diagram shows here, increasing prices mean that money is worth less. And we talked about the Weimar Republic and Germany in particular. So there were different types of inflation. Cost push inflation, first of all. Well, this was where wages were maybe continuing to rise and that was pushing up prices through demand. Also commodities. Increases in commodity prices will push up the prices of other products that are used those commodities. Also things like increasing in tax. So for example, VAT going up will increase inflation. Remember, their customer demand will also increase inflation. More demand means that more demand for the same amount of goods will push up the price of those goods. So consumer demand will increase inflation. Also, the money supply will have a big effect on inflation, and we talked about how that happens. In the UK here, we have a 2% target. So the monetary policy makers are targeting 2% as a stable level of inflation. The third of our targets is a high stable growth in the economy. So they don't want the economy to be going from boom to bust, to be getting overheated and then slowing down very rapidly. They want high growth, but they want to maintain it. So high stable growth is the third target. And the last target is to maintain a balance of payments on your imports and exports. So how can the policymakers achieve these? Well, there's two real methods. The first of these is fiscal. When you think of fiscal, we think of tax and spend. So the tax is where the government takes money from you. The government then spends that money on services, etc. in the economy. Also remember that government subsidies will form part of fiscal policy. Monetary policy then, we're thinking about the monetary supply. And what we can control that with are things like interest rates or indeed in extreme cases quantitative easing as we've seen recently in both the UK and the US. Moving on then to other policies that we need to be aware of. Interest rate policies. We'll remember that interest rates were the percentage charged for the use of money. What this will do is it will have an effect on disposable income. So by increasing incre interest rates, for example, that means that people will have to spend more on, say, their debt servicing, like their mortgage, their credit cards. That means they'll have less to spend in the economy. So it's a good way of slowing the economy down. Likewise, if there's a recession, you can decrease the interest rates, put less pressure on households, they'll have more disposable income, and that can therefore kickstart the economy again. So effectively, the interest rate adjusts the money supply in the economy. The exchange rate will be another area in which the, the policymakers may intervene. So you're thinking here about the price of imports and exports, and there may be government intervention in exchange rates, buying or selling the currency to try and de devalue or maintain the value of your currency. And China are a particular example of a country that does this quite often. Competition, well, every economy will have something akin to the Competition Commission. Remember, competition is good for the consumer, so the government should be trying 
to make competition part of the economy. For example, in the UK, the supermarkets would be an area that the government would try to maintain competition. Because there's only several large players in the market, you need to try and maintain competition by not allowing them to buy out other smaller competitors. Also may be green policies in action from the government. For example, things like airport taxes, carbon capture. So this all ties in with the reduction in CO2 emissions and the attempts to make our economy more environmentally friendly. Other things you need to be aware of is that the government will promote growth in the economy. So they'll try to promote growth. They may give subsidies to different areas. They may even invest in different areas. And in Northern Ireland here, we have Invest NI, who will invest money into small businesses to help them grow. Lastly then, looking at markets. We did have a first look at the capital or stock market in the previous lecture, but let's just run over exactly what we're talking about. Financial markets, first of all, this is where we buy or sell securities and commodities. And we talked in detail about the capital or stock market in our, our lecture on finance sources. Really what the financial markets do is that they bring buyers and sellers together. Why are they doing that? Well, because it'll facilitate the raising of capital, for example, in the form of equity. So you're bringing the buyers of equity together and the sellers, the company that want to raise equity or finance in the form of equity. We can also transfer risk, and that's in the form of derivatives. We'll talk more about these when we look at a currency hedging. But by having derivatives, you can transfer risk or manage your risk in the, in the stock markets or financial markets. They also facilitate international trade through having those foreign exchange markets. So that's why we have the financial markets to buy or sell commodities, to bring those buyers or sellers together and to facilitate the raising of capital, transfer of risk and international trade. Remember we then talked about the money markets, which were the global short term borrowing or lending markets, particularly brought to the fore in the financial crisis. These are where the trade is in treasury bills and commercial paper. And we talked about how the banks use this to raise short-term borrowing and lend that long. Capital markets, well, that's really just the stock market that we've already talked about, the commodities exchanges, and also the bond markets. And we'll talk more about the bond markets when we look at debt. Another term you need to be familiar with is euro markets. These are the international capital markets. Really, euro means external, so it really means finance raised outside of the original country. So it's the international capital markets, euro markets. Another terminology that we need to be familiar with is financial intermediaries. Remember, these perform intermediation between parties. So thinking of it in, form of, in the form of a transaction, you'll have the buyer and the seller, and in between you'll have an intermediary. Really, we're thinking here about things like banks or even finance houses. When you're raising finance, you'll have a buyer and a seller. The finance house will be in between providing the finance. We lastly then just had a refresh of our stock market. Why do we have it? First of all, to buy or sell shares. Also for the company to raise capital. Remember the primary and secondary function. The types of security, well, you'll become familiar with these. Treasury bills, remember that's risk-free potentially. Government debt, long-term government bonds, corporate bonds raised by uh, firms who want to raise debt finance, preference shares and ordinary shares. So all of these are types of security that we'll meet throughout the F9 course. So that was our lecture four on the financial management environment.